I love to make bullet journal idea videos, and that means making a heap of bullet journal layouts. But because of how many I make, it seems a little impractical to put this in my everyday bullet journal. For that reason, I like to use what I call an R&D bullet journal, or research and development. And these journals are used as a place to put all of those layout ideas that I share on the channel. Across 2023, I used four different R&D journals. So let's have a look at the ideas that I captured in them. It is a complete coincidence that all of these ended up being green. And I will say that before we get into to it, not all of these are full. It just so happened that some of the idea videos I was setting up, I needed to have things at the very start of a notebook. So I needed to start in a new notebook. But any of the ones that aren't finished, I will be carrying forward into next year to make sure that I use up all of the pages. But we'll start with the one that I started with first, which is this guy. As we go through, a lot of the layouts that I'm going to be showing off do have separate videos on the channel. But on the inside cover of this one, we have two ideas. This one being a flip out weekly reset checklist. So some steps that you want to do at the end of each week to get cool, calm and collected for the week ahead. And then this little guy here is related to an idea we actually have on a subsequent page. So right now you can see that it just has a couple of little tasks that you might want to do on kind of a weekly basis. But we'll get back to him when we come to the page that it's related to. Of course, on the front page, we just have my name and then flipping on over, we have another idea. I'm already worried about how many times I'm going to say idea in this video, but that is turning the first page of your journal into a pocket. So that page that's kind of awkwardly stuck to the cover card, you just cut off the top of it, stick down the edge and the bottom and make it into this little pocket that you can use to store stuff. We also had some other ideas in that one. So we have the idea of having a year at a glance calendar in there, one that you can like take out and take with you to whatever layout you're working on, which could be useful. We have a grid spacing ruler. So on one side, you've got the vertical divisions. So you just Put that up against your page and you can see 1 through 38 for the A5. And then on the other side, we have the horizontal. So 1 through 28. Actually, I numbered it too far. 1 through 26 on that one. And just shows you how to split the page if you want to divide it into different amounts. Put that one back into the pocket as well. This guy here is a monthly bill timeline. So if you have bills that come out at the same time each month, like on the same day, you can just put those down on here so that you know what's coming up. You can add it to your monthly log with a handy reference. Slipping that guy back in. This idea here is a year in pixels for anything that isn't a mood tracker. A lot of people have previously used years in pixels as mood trackers, but you can use this for a range of things. We've got some ideas here. So like moods, obviously, but also the weather, spending habits, productivity, energy levels, so on and so forth. For this one, you can tack on a little key. And one thing that's different about this year in pixels compared to typical ones that you might see is that this one isn't arranged by month. Instead, this one is that every row is a week of the year. So each column is a day of the week, Monday through to Sunday. Of course, in setting this up, if you want to start with Sunday, that's totally fine. The nice part about doing it this way, though, is that you get to see weekly trends. So it's like, hey, maybe every Thursday I'm noticing that I don't really have the high hitting values. I've only got the low ones. I'm more likely to do certain habit on certain day of the week that kind of thing. Flipping over, this one is a 52 week challenge and you can put the prompts for that in your journal. This one was related to making a different layout in your journal or sharing it online for each of the weeks of the year. And this one is a snapshot of the year layout. So just a little box for each of the months of the year and writing down a couple of things that happened. This idea here actually is two ideas. So we have an on the monthly, which is where you have tasks that you want to do on a monthly basis. And then you have a column for each of the months of the year and you can tick them off as you do them. And then down the bottom, we have a what in the world space. So recording any kind of global happenings. Again, as a kind of reflection space, similar to what we had with the snapshots, but slightly different layout. This guy here is a year at a glance, but specifically a year at a glance that is for when did I last? So you color code it based on what your different tasks are. And then any day that you do the thing, you can just put a little dot on the calendar. Very good for those tasks that you want to do on a semi frequent basis, but not every single day or every single week could be like a twice a month thing or a quarterly thing really depends on what you want to record. This one is a roadmap to the end of the year. So a way to kind of break down a project that you're working on and think about the steps that you need to take in order to get that thing done. The way that I would typically tackle this is by backwards planning. So thinking about the outcome that you want to achieve, what has to happen before that, what has to happen before that, before that. You can just write it down as a simple list. I just decided to make it a little decorative. This one here is a daily planning routine 
routine. So the steps that you want to take when you're doing your daily planning or working in your planners daily. And we've also turned this one into a reusable checklist. You might see the shininess over those check boxes there. So that's just a piece of sellotape that I've stuck on top of it. And then you can use something like a dry erase marker to tick off when you've done the things and wipe it off at the end of the day. You can also use book contact paper, but at this stage I didn't have any. This one is another year at a glance type layout, but it is for monthly challenges. So you set yourself a little challenge for each of the months of the year, and then you can just use dot markers or just cross off the days once you've done that thing or not done that thing. I quite like this for big overarching kind of things that I'm trying to work on. So for instance, if you're trying to be like more physically healthy, then what are 12 little challenges that you could do as related to your physical health? Flipping over. This one here is a weekly checklist and this is the one that was related to that little flip out from before. So you can see the flip out comes out the side. You can see it from any spread in the journal. And then rather than writing down all of these things every single week, I mean, I know there are only five of them, but you could make it bigger. You instead have it as a flip out and then just check them off on the side of your weekly setup. So you don't have to build this checklist into the setup. You just need a place to tick off that you did the thing. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. As mentioned, this one does have its own separate video where we go into a little bit more detail. We've just got a lot of pages to get through. So we're going through pretty quickly. If you have any questions though, just ask in the comments. But our next idea here is a timed tasks list. So thinking about what can I do in five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just so that you have those little snippets of time in your day and you want to do something. These are the kind of things you could do. You could also relate them to small leisure activities or tiny self care tasks really just depends on what your focus is. The idea we have down the bottom here is a project workflow. So listing out what your projects are and then the steps that you need to take for all of them and tick them off as they get completed. This is in particular quite good for a series of projects that all have the same kind of steps. So for me, that'd be like making YouTube videos or it could be your workflow for writing reports or whatever else. Again, depends on what kind of work you're doing. But up the top here, we have a weekly reflection space. And then down the bottom, we have a monthly reflection space. These could end up with fairly similar kind of structures, but some things you might wanna put on are things like wins, challenges, things you did and didn't love about your planner, any kind of statistics. I've just related these to social media because it's a cop-out answer, but this could be related to something like pages read, steps taken, water intake, depends on what kind of stats you're interested in, things that are completed, incomplete, coming up, any of next month's goals, things that you're proud of, things that you want to try, and a focus for the next month. On to the next page though. On this one, we have an action plan. So breaking things down into the monthly tasks you need to do, weekly tasks you need to do, and daily tasks. I was mainly thinking about goals in terms of this. So the different types of tasks that you might want to do to work on a goal. And then we have a little mind map down the bottom called try it this way. The idea here being that you're trying to try new things, get outside of your comfort zone, break away from stuff that you typically do just in one set way. So breaking it down into the different areas you want to try new stuff in, and then thinking about what you could do differently in each of those areas. This layout here is a monthly tracker. So you can see one through 31 down the side. And I've also color coded when the weekends are, but this one is a work boundaries tracker. So each of these habits are related to boundaries and boundary keeping in the workplace. Just like a regular habit tracker, when you do the thing, you color in the box. We have a little key at the bottom for the days that you completed things versus the days you weren't actually at work. Our next idea is a yearly routine builder. And this is one that I really quite like. I've used it previously for things like cleaning and housework to varied success because I don't like cleaning and housework, but that's not the layout's fault. That's a me problem. On this one, we have daily things, weekly or fortnightly things. And by that, I mean bi-weekly, like every two weeks, monthly stuff, quarterly stuff and biannual stuff. While the daily stuff doesn't actually get tracked on this style of layout, you see here it says reference to put on a habit tracker. The other ones do. So any of the green dots here mean that the thing got done. Any of the red dots mean that it did not get done. This was the last layout related to this video, which was 23 new ideas for your 2023 bullet journal. And then we're into some more. To be completely honest, I can't quite remember which video this was for, but something about journaling, possibly a yearly reflection type thing. I don't know. It just says you could fill a page like this with doodles of things you like or that are about you, or you could just make it a journaling space. Obviously this is just an example. <laughs> 
So this is like a snapshot of me, and this is just a little bit of, I don't know, decoration. But after this one, we get into savings ideas and different savings challenges or savings trackers that you can put in your journal. Again, this one does have its own dedicated video, so we'll go through them fairly quickly. This is 23, lots of $23 in 2023, which you could do as 24 and 2024, 25 and 2025, so on and so forth. But effectively, each of the boxes in here represents a dollar saved, and then over the course of the year, you save $529, if you're doing 23 times 23. This one here is a year in pixels, but specifically done with money in mind. So this one in particular is related to how much you spent or didn't spend, with different colors representing different amounts of spending on the day. Some little summary spaces for spendings versus savings, but flipping over, this one here is a dollar a day challenge, so saving a dollar a day, and then just recording the days you do or don't save on a year at a glance. This one is a roundup challenge, so thinking about certain items that you commonly buy and what you could do to kind of round up that amount and save the difference. So for instance, you'd list the item here, list the cost of the item, list the roundup, and then every time you purchase that item, whatever the roundup amount is goes into your savings. Effectively, most of these are just ways to gamify your savings, but this one is a 100 envelope challenge. I don't know if it's actually called that, but the idea is that you have 100 envelopes, which are just drawn on the page, and each of them are given an amount of one to a hundred dollars. So you can maybe see the little red dots here. Each of those have a number from one to a hundred. As you save those amounts, you just color in the envelope, and then across the year, if you do all of the envelopes, that's saving $5,050. This one here is a Tetris savings tracker, so different Tetris blocks represent different amounts, and as you save those amounts, you just add them to your board, and then you could possibly give yourself some rewards when you complete certain lines or something like that. This one is a 52-week challenge, so thinking of a specific number, so I just picked the number five for ease, and then each of the weeks is assigned a random other number to get multiplied with your choice of number. So you can see the first week is one, second week is three, next week is five, then we have 11, eight, seven, two, so on and so forth. And then in picking whatever your number is, you just multiply your number by the number for the week. So five times one is five dollars, that week you save five dollars. Three times five is fifteen, in the second week, you save $15. This one is a Saveopoly board. So with each paycheck, you roll a die and then move however many spaces. Whatever you land on, you then save. So for instance, if we start on go and we roll a three, then one, two, three, you save 1% of your paycheck. Then for the next paycheck, let's just say we roll a, I don't know, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is a die you can either roll again, I mean, it's your board, you can decide how it works, or you can just roll a die and multiply it by whatever number you got to get here. So for instance, we got six to get here. If we roll the die again and get three, then six times three is how much we save. Again, it's just a bit of fun. Really, you can populate this with whatever you want, but that was kind of my thinking in setting it up. This one here is a sell it off challenge. So going through your house, doing a big declutter of your belongings, and then selling off any of the things that are still in good quality, they've still got kind of potential to be useful to somebody else and then all of the funds that come from selling those items, you put into your savings. This one is just broken down by different places in the house, listing out the items you decluttered, what you sold them for, and totaling it up. Another monthly challenge, but this one is related to savings, so similar idea, you just put a dot for saying whether you did or did not do the thing for each day of the month. And then this one is the loose change challenge. So at the end of every week, any of the loose change that you have in your wallet goes into your savings. This one just has 52 spaces to record the amount for the 52 weeks and then a total and an average per week. This one is the how low can you go challenge. So effectively trying to reduce your spending in certain areas. We've just got the areas along the top and then the boxes where you can record how much you spent. And then come the next month, you can use a little color code to say whether you went over what you spent last month, under or effectively on par. Moving away from these savings ideas though and into the mental health ideas. Again, another one that has its own video. This one here is kind of like a when did I last, but it is for self care routines. So you color code your tasks and then you mark on your calendar any of the days that you do those tasks. In particular, this would be for bigger self-care items, probably not your daily tasks. 
But if you do have things that you want to do on a more regular basis, for instance, weekly tasks, you can put them in a slightly different style tracker. This one is a daily wins or a ta-da list. So just getting us to focus a little more on the things we have done rather than the things that have been left unfinished. Kind of like a daily gratitude practice, but just giving yourself that acknowledgement that yes, you did do something today. So a line a day for the month and just writing that down. On this one, we have a mental health habit tracker. So different mental health habits and checking off whether you did them. And we bought back the work boundaries tracker because that one again is quite related to, you know, personal wellness. This guy is the circle of control. So things that are within your control and then things that on the outside are outside of your control. This one would be more of a reference page just as a reminder of what you can and can't control so that you only focus on your own tasks. You could make this specific to a particular particular situation. So for instance, like home for the holidays, what are things within my control and outside of my control when dealing with my family? Or it could just be more general. Down the bottom here, this is what is called a trigger list. And this term comes from David Allen and getting things done. And it's effectively just a list of things that you can scan your eyes over anytime you're doing a brain dump or a mind unwind, just to get everything out of your head. It's effectively a tool that you can use to declutter your brain more effectively. This one is another timed tasks idea, but this one is for mood boosters. So five minute mood boosters, 10 minute and 20 minute. Just filling in the little things that you can do to get yourself in a more positive headspace. This guy is a favorite things day plan. So the little things that you wanna do as part of a favorite things day to just give yourself those kind of like nice, warm, fuzzy, cozy vibe feelings really depends on what your favorite things are but cozy vibes are one of my favorite things. So that would be on my day plan. This one is a recipe for a good day. So the regular things that we can do to make any day pretty awesome. And then the things that we can do on an ultra special day to make it very, very awesome. This page has three separate ideas. So we have a compliment keeper. We're just making a little kind of pocket or space in your journal that you can keep little notes from people, whether they actually be in physical form or if you write them down yourself and put them in. Maybe if somebody sends you some nice words via email, you could print those off and put those in your compliment keeper. We have the let it go list or things that you do not want to bring forward with you when moving into a new chapter or season or year or whatever else. And this one down the bottom is a stressor log. So recording the date and time for the stressor, the trigger, so what happened that caused the stress, what kind of mental feelings and physical feelings did this bring up, and then what did you do in response to that? This might be kind of hard to record at the time, so it's probably something you'd record after the fact, but as part of that you could consider, did the actions taken actually help me overcome this stress or manage it? Moving into physical health ideas though, so this one again has I think 12 different ideas. So we have the don't break the chain challenge, where we have a little box for each of the days of the year, and and then while you're trying to do a certain habit or build a certain habit, you can just put a little dot in the box for each of the days you do it. But anytime you don't do it, you break the chain. You have to change colors for that. So for instance, we've got the first chain being the yellow dots, dot, 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 dot. But then they broke the chain and it has to change to green. And then the next time they break the chain, it changes to purple, so on and so forth. The idea being that you don't really want to break the chain. It is very satisfying when you have a long list of dots all in a row that have the same color and it helps to motivate you to do the thing or get it done. Down the bottom, we have a better health mind map. So thinking about the different aspects of physical health and what you can do in them to promote physical health for yourself. And then of course we have a year in pixels. I'm very attached to the idea of a year in pixels that isn't for moods. So this one in particular is any kind of physical health related one. We had a couple of ideas here. So like types of exercise, volumes of water, whether you did or didn't have fast food, if that's something you're trying to avoid, a little space for a key. And then I just kind of went ham on stickers because I have a physical health sticker book and I wasn't really using it for anything in my regular planner. This one here is a physical health bingo. So putting in little things related to physical health, maybe little milestones that you could hit or little things that you could do as part of building your physical health. And then as you do them, you just color them in or check them off. And you can also set yourself some rewards. It might also be nice to have a space to record any non-scale victories. So things that happen that aren't just related to numbers effectively. So maybe your clothing size changed or your energy levels have improved. Maybe 
maybe you discovered a new healthy food that you really enjoy eating. And just having a space to record those little achievements as well. This one here is a monthly challenges list, but specifically related to physical health. Flipping over. This one is the 500 miles and 500 more challenge. So a little box for each of your different increments. I mean, you don't actually have to do 500 miles. It can be whatever you want it to be. We have a little key to say that one box represents 10 miles. And as you do that throughout your kind of repeated running or cycling or swimming or whatever it is practice, you just color them in with each of those distances achieved. Down the bottom, we have a meals to try space. So different foods for different meals that you'd like to have a go at either making or eating. And it says down the bottom, you could also set this up as a just regular list or as a picture gallery because sometimes it's really nice to see pictures of the food when you're coming back to like look through this list for inspiration. It's like, oh yeah, that was actually delicious if you can see it rather than just the words written on a page. This one here is the Eat the Rainbow Challenge. So it's effectively just a bunch of fruits and vegetables that are kind of loosely in rainbow order. I just put them in with little black dots, but honestly, I probably wouldn't do that. I'd either use colored dots or just an individual task bullet so that I can cross them off as I try them. Cause I mean, this is the Eat the Rainbow Challenge. Down the bottom we have a couch to 5k tracker and you can find a lot of different variations of this online for better inspiration of how you could set this up. I just tucked it into the corner here though because this was an ideas video. The 2323s in 2023 are back, so 23 health habits that you want to do 23 times across the year. Again because this one was set up in preparation for 2023, that's why it's focusing on the number 23. But you could do this for different amounts. I mean technically speaking you also don't have to link this to the year either. And then this one is a fun healthy stats page which I then just filled with a bunch of stickers. But there are a couple of different ways that you can track things, so it might be like distances converted to pop culture references or whatever else. In the next section we have reading challenges. So a bunch of things that might be fun to add to your reading journal or your regular journal if you keep your reading stuff in there. This one is the A to Z challenge. So each of the letters of the alphabet and trying to read something that starts with that letter. This could either be related to the book title or it could be related to the author. We have the Read the Rainbow Challenge, which is based on the cover art of the books that you're reading and trying to get one that fits each of the different colors that you know you specify in your tracker. And then down the bottom, we also have a genre exploration. So picking 12 different genres that you want to explore across the year. You could even possibly assign one to each month and then just using that as a way to kind of expand your reading horizons. On this page though, we have the Read Around the World Challenge. So you've got your little world map here and you try and read books that either have an author for from a certain country or they're based in a certain country. There's also some little lists down the bottom to write down what they were. Again, the actual layouts of these ideas are just suggestions. A lot of them, if I was gonna set them up in my own journal, I would give them either a full page or a full spread, but because they were just for idea videos, I've tucked them into little corners and stuff like that. This guy up here is the reflective reading challenge. So thinking about characteristics that you want to either kind of build or develop for yourself and then books that you can read which have characters that represent those different characteristics. We have the representation or diverse reads challenge. So again, trying to get outside of your typical reading zone, especially when a lot of books that are promoted are by the same kind of authors. Like for instance, I found that a lot of the books that I tend to read, nonfiction in particular, are by Caucasian males which in itself isn't necessarily a problem. Like they've probably got some pretty good things to say. Otherwise they probably wouldn't be super popular books, question mark. But it's nice to be able to support other people as well. Flipping over, we have the year of reading challenge, which effectively is a year in pixels. It's just done with reading in mind. We've got the bookshelfy, which is just a bookshelf with a bunch of little books and you just color them in as you read them. You could either color code these based on the format that you read in or your rating of the book. Or if you're a slow reader like me, this many books would probably last you a couple of years. So you could color it in based on when you read them. This one here is a reading bingo board. So just a five by five with a bunch of little prompts. And then as you read something that fits into one of those prompts, you can color it in. This is one that I do have in my reading journal because I think it's a lot of fun. It's just kind of a way to gamify your reading. We have the head to head or the book bracket 
Honestly, this isn't my preferred way to do your kind of overall ranking of your books for the year, but a lot of people do really like it. So effectively taking your best read from each of the months, those go on the outer boxes at the bottom and the top, and then pitting them head to head against each other, whoever wins moves on to the next round, so on and so forth, until you get the top read of the year. On this side we have book awards, and more specifically thinking about your book awards and awards that you would give your books if you were hosting some kind of book award show. So my top read, made me cry the most, best series, and this challenge here is a fact versus fiction. So thinking about either books that have a similar topic or more likely and easier, a similar name. So for instance, Atomic Habits versus Atomic Love. Can't Look Away versus Can't Hurt Me. Can be a fun way to balance your reading across fiction and non-fiction reads. The next set of layouts we have are all related to relationships and either building better relationships or recording stuff about relationships. This first one is effectively a future log, but just for birthdays and anniversaries. So a box for each of the months of the year and just recording things in those. The next one though is a friends notes space. So just writing down a couple of notes about your friends, the kind of things that you might have a tendency to forget just so that if you want to treat them, get them a present or a little gift or something, you have some things to look back on if you're forgetful like me and you don't necessarily remember this stuff easily. So it's like, oh hey, I want to buy Emily a cupcake. What's her favorite flavor of cupcake? I don't remember. I'll come back to my friend's notes. This one is a list of 36 questions to fall in love. Admittedly, I only got to 20 before I ran out of space, but I just thought it was interesting to have those questions that you can ask people to kind of get to know them better, kind of deepen your connection with them. I know that the full list is available online somewhere, so you can effectively just search it up. This one here is for love language notes. So the five different love languages, maybe who in your life prefers them in particular, and the kind of things or communication styles that you can use with them that will make them feel more loved. For instance, I know that Vogel's love language is very much acts of service, whereas mine is very much words of affirmation. So knowing that about each other means that we can love each other right. Over here we have event planning because oftentimes social connection goes with events and seeing people. So just planning out the different elements of the event itself. Again, I would probably expand this to a full page rather than just tucking it into the top of a page. But down the bottom we have a contact log. So who was it? When did the contact happen? How was the contact done? So it was like in person or over messenger or via FaceTime. And what was it that you were catching up about? You could also record who initiated the conversation just to make sure that you're being reciprocal in your relationships. So it's like, oh, the only time I ever talk to insert person here is when I reach out to them. That kind of thing can leave us feeling a little bit sour about relationships. But the next one here is a conflict log. So these columns represent different things that are common causes of conflict. You can specify who the conflict was with, when it happened, and whether it's been resolved in a way that both parties are kind of happy with. Not so much as a negative thing. This isn't a space to, I don't know, get down on ourselves and, you know, oh, we're having so much conflict in our relationships. But more so you can start to identify specific things that are kind of triggers for conflict. And maybe they need to be addressed and find some solutions together so it doesn't really come up as much. Down the bottom we have a kindness log. So recording who it was for or what direction the kindness went in. So it was you to a friend or a friend to you when it happened and what was it. Again, so we can kind of be a little bit more reciprocating in our relationships. This layout here was inspired by Miss McKenna's Life Leverage, and this is a relationship tracker. So this does have things built into it, like the conflict log, but also has hours spent together. So make sure that you're spending quality time with your person or people. Flipping over, this one here is a date night ideas, and this one is broken down into different price categories. So free, $20, $40, depends on how much you guys spend on your date nights. Just writing out some ideas for any of those. So when you wanna have a date night, you've got a place to look. Something that I super loved, which comes from Erin of Erin Flodo Designs is the alphabet dates. So each of the letters of the alphabet, thinking of something that you guys can do as a date night together. And you could put this in as a tracker and tick them off as you do them. On this side here, we have relationship meeting notes and my partner and I, Vogel, we do have relationship meetings. We call them household meetings because he didn't like the term relationship meeting, but it's effectively a designated time to check in with each other and see how things are going. This is broken down into a couple of sections. So we have the nuts and bolts, so like chores, meal planning, things to do around the house, things for keeping 
connected, so stuff that we've enjoyed together, addressing any pain points or concerns. There's a time for dreaming about the future, so thinking about visions and hopes of the future, and then closing it out and just having some kind of fun together, maybe playing a game, watching a video, whatever else. Flipping over though, and the next idea we have is a 60 before 60, and this one was related to goal setting layouts. So different things that you can do to set goals and goal layouts in your journal. A lot of the ones in this video were actually from my journal specifically, but this one we set up as an example. So it's just 60 different things that you want to do before you turn 60. Kind of like a bucket list with a deadline. Well, I mean, technically bucket lists have deadlines, but anyway, so we're getting into our theme ideas section here. I wanted to put all of these together because I just really liked how they looked together, but each of these is split into 12 boxes, which each have a little space for decoration and then a space for a color swatch. So this one was for theme ideas for the new year, specifically ones that are super easy. So a black and gold theme, which you can just do with a gold gel pen, but I did with gold paint, a plaid theme, five fireflies, minimal geometric, actually both of these are ones that I've used before, a rain theme, which I have also used, probably shouldn't have jumped the gun on that, <laughs> paper planes, bubbles, polaroids, simple botanicals, a cross stitch theme, because it's effectively just crosses, spider webs, and then just using washi tape or stickers. Over the page, more theme ideas. I'm not gonna read through all of them, but these were all ones for January. So they were specifically related to days of significance in January or happenings in January. After this one, we have the February themes. I really love potato lovers. I mean, I think it's supposed to be about people who love potatoes, not potatoes who love each other, but it's very cute. Hippos, self-love, Inko Rimo. We have the March theme ideas. So alien abduction, umbrellas, pie for like pie day. A maths theme would be kind of cute. Then we have April. So we've got penguins, unicorns, April showers. Then after this one, we obviously have May. So may the force be with you, Star Wars. Zombies, bees, koalas. I remember for these videos being very enthusiastic about having a full year of all of this done and that sentiment certainly amped up towards the end of the year because honestly I got a little bit sick of doing these videos like now as they're done I think that they look very cute I love the koi fish theme absolutely gorgeous but yeah it was not necessarily a series that I was as enthusiastic about the whole way through I am not sure which month we were up to here but I would still love to do a Sailor Moon theme and then over the page we have what Batman day pet rock day coffee day video games day all of them yes related to novel holidays and then we've got candy corn and halloween so i'm guessing this is october we've also got pink ribbons for breast cancer awareness month which means that this guy here is november i think that the way that the gradient on this jukebox turned out was very good and then we have december now my idea for the series was that i was going to set up another set of ideas for like 2024 themes but after doing this for an entire year i just was not feeling it so i drew these out they're kind of ready except for the little color swatches over here don't have their ladders but never ended up actually filling it in the next set of ideas though we have are all for inco rimo so international correspondence writing month which is in february and the idea is to handwrite a letter for each of the days in february so in this one we have the rules for inco rimo including any like house rules that you want to set for yourself. We have a writing supplies checklist, your correspondence lineup, so people you're sending things to and who you're going to be receiving things from. Over the page, we have some writing prompts, just in case you can't really think of anything to write about. And you could also set up some space in your journal for kind of like an address book. So as you collect the addresses for the people that you're going to be sending letters to, you have a dedicated space to write them down. Probably not as small as this. Again, this is just a layout idea. I would not be able to fit most addresses into a space that big. <laughs> but anyway, this one here is a correspondence workflow. So for each of the letters you're writing, what do you have to do? So got the address for the person, the writing topic has been picked out, you've written the letter, so on and so forth. Depends on the stages that you have in your process. Up here we have a happy mail planner. So what kind of happy mail pieces do you want to send and for which letters do you want to include them? So on this one I've just included 1 through 10 for 10 specific letters that you're sending that you want to put happy mail in. And then you can check off which ones get which pieces of happy mail. This one here is a card keeper, kind of similar to what we had with the compliment 
document keeper from before. So just sticking in envelopes and letters into your notebook so that you have them there for safekeeping. Again, probably bigger than this, but you know, it's just an idea. And then after this, we have simple weekly layouts. So weekly layouts that you can effectively set up in like two minutes or less. These ones were both one page layouts. So we have this one, which has each of the days of the week on the side and then a large running to do list. And then this one, which again is split into two columns, but we have a space that's a bit bigger for each of the days of the week and then a little to do list. These ones were just done with the dot marker, so they're like super fast to set up. We then also talked about the idea that if you want to have something that's a little bit decorative, you can use something like washi tape or PET tape. It's just a little bit easier to make it look decorative and very pretty without actually having to do a lot of work yourself. So this one is a full spread where we have a column for each of the weekdays and then the weekend is shared in this column here. Again, using the dot markers to make it a little bit faster. In this one, we put in way less dots because putting in all of those dots notably takes time. You don't necessarily have to do that ahead of time. So this one is sectioned out into horizontal thirds. So one, two, three, and then the same on the other side, but the weekend sharing that one down the bottom. Flipping over though, another weekly setup idea. So five days on this side, two on this side and the to-do list. Just doing some simple dividing lines rather than drawing in full boxes because that does take time as well. And then this one is just kind of showing that you can do a Dutch door in a hurry if you want to. Now, when I set this up initially, it did not have the brown lines on it, I don't think. I think I came and put those in in a subsequent video, kind of as a you know little piece of extra footage or something like that, because doing all of those horizontal lines does take a little bit of time. But again, we just showed off that you can put the washi tape in to make things a little decorative without having to spend a lot of effort. So previously, it did not look quite like this. It didn't have any of the brown, but general idea that you can actually do a Dutch door in a hurry. This one was for a lettering ideas video, obviously, because it has a bunch of lettering ideas, but we just have six different lettering styles that you can use in your planner that are a little bit different to just like typical cursive. So normally you would use something like this for a header or something like a title on a page rather than the kind of bulk text but I think that they look pretty cute. Some of these you can color in the larger gaps for, or like the leaf on these ones here, whereas other ones are more just kind of like line work, but they look pretty cute. Then we are into a kind of like fake monthly setup. This was when I was going away. I was going to the United States for the Go Wild conference, and I figured I'd do an additional monthly plan with me for a video, mainly because all of the collections that we have in this setup are ones that I hadn't really previously used myself and I wanted them for a separate video where I didn't necessarily have to film the setup of them but I figured like if I'm gonna make them anyway I might as well just put them all into a monthly setup and film the setup. So we have affirmations on the side here. We've got the cover page with the PET tape. You can kind of see that like shininess, but I do like the way that it blends into the paper. Then after this, we have the monthly calendar, a little bit different to a style to what I usually use. And then a family schedule. So a column for different people in your family. Again, maybe expand this over multiple pages to make it a little bit more usable. Flipping over, we have the self love log. So it has a little space for each of the days of the month. And you just write something down that you love about yourself or at least like about yourself. This one is a chores tracker, so effectively a habit tracker, but each of these are chores, not other types of habits. Then there's a little key down the bottom to specify whether it did or didn't get done. On to the next page, this one is a screen time tracker. So again, a little box for each of the days of the month, and then you just color them in based on how much time you spent looking at screens. One of the reasons that I haven't done this for myself is probably because the data would make me sad. <laughs> but anywho, this one is a tiny wins log. So you can either have it so that you record it for each day of the month and something small that was an achievement or an accomplishment in that day, or just use it for any tiny wins that come up, especially because some days we have quite a few tiny wins and then other days we maybe don't actually really have one that's of note. But the idea is to build some positivity by putting in those small things that are accomplishments, but sometimes get overlooked because we feel like accomplishments have to be big. Anywho, 
flipping over. This one is a dream log. And again, I would probably, if using this in my journal, set it up so the boxes are a little bit bigger because I'd probably want a little bit more room to write about the dreams. But it is something that you can include in a monthly setup. This one has a little bit of washi tape on it randomly. We'll take that off. There we go, much better. And then this one is an ideas page and work ideas, home ideas, and personal ideas. So just splitting them out into different life areas. Another one for this setup though is a playlist. And I know that people do like to use this. I think they used to be more popular than they are now. I've never really felt the need to use them. So just writing down some songs for the month, they might be related to your overall setup theme, or it could be just things that you've enjoyed in the past month. A little monthly review in the form of a currently space. So currently watching, reading, eating, loving, hoping, worrying about, celebrating, wearing, and making. A bunch of verbs and just answering those for a little snapshot of you during that month. This one is the return of the what in the world, except rather than doing it across the entire year, it's just the headlines that happened in the month itself. So a space to write out what the headline was and a little blurb about what they were actually talking about, just for any worldly happenings. And then we have this, okay, this one was a lot of fun, but again, I wasn't gonna put it into my personal journal because I set up the same weekly four times in a row, but decreasing the amount of time I gave myself. So this one here was done in an hour and I think it looks pretty good. I know that the person who actually does this style, her name's Tammy, she's from Living Letter Plans. We were trying to recreate her layout and she does take a decent amount of time to do it and does amazing work because of it. But mine was a time trial. So we have one hour, we have 15 minutes, which distinctly does not look as good. Like it's still okay, but really not, not as special. And then after that we have, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> I turned too far ahead. This one I think was the, possibly the five minute version. And then this one was the one minute version and it just looks like, <laughs> It's just, it, it was a fun video. It was a fun video to make, but there's a reason why I did not want to put it in my everyday journal. Anywho, flipping over. This one was done as part of a live stream where we were recreating my first bullet journal setup. At the time we were setting it up, it was June, but the setup that we were mimicking or recreating was from November. So we decided to call it June Vember. I really love the lettering. I think I did a very good job of it. I'll just toot my own horn here. But because this was a setup that I'd already done and we were recreating, it effectively looks pretty much the same, just a little bit different because we were very much going with the idea of if I were to do it again, how would I actually do it? So it was kind of like the slightly better version, but we've got the monthly log and the habit tracker and then the first weekly that I set up. Again, just doing it slightly better with June Vember. The next layout is another live stream setup. And in this one, we were getting an AI to tell me how to set up my planner. So I effectively asked it like, hey, I wanna set up my bullet journal for June. Like, what should I do? So it suggested the theme and the decorative elements that I should include. It suggested the layouts that I should include. So we took what it said and put it into the notebook. None of this is AI generated art. It is just recommendations from chat GPT as to what I should put in here. So we have a little monthly dashboard with an outline for the month, actions, affirmations, which I just wrote affirm because I think A-T-I-O-N. Yeah, I wasn't gonna be able to fit affirmations in there. A little quote, the cover page, this part here in the yellow and orange was done with distress oxide inks, which I think looks pretty cute. And then we have the monthly log, which again, we used the distress oxide inks for each of the different, I don't know, rays of sunshine. I think it looks pretty cute, but because it did take a while, we did actually only end up setting up these two spreads. So after this, we have space for another video, which was planning my new journal setup, in particular for my square notebook that I had for September through to December. So just mapping out the kind of things that I wanted it to include, and then writing down a list of pages. Each of the colored dots just represents what they're related to so that then I could sequence them based on category. After this one though, we have the space that I planned out my digital reset, which we kind of recently had on the channel. So thinking about the different areas that I wanted to reset, what I wanted to do in order to reset them, and then planning out my email folders and my folder map for my computer. Now, as said, not all of these journals are full. So we do have a couple more pages in the back of this one that I can use. 
But that is not where the ideas stop. This one was from Your Bujo, Your Bujo, and it's another A5 notebook. And this one in particular got used as part of the Bullet Journal Basic series, or effectively the series of videos that we have that is for like super beginners to the Bullet Journal method. I wanted to put this one into a separate notebook, really so that I could show off how you would set up a Bullet Journal if you were using just the traditional method and setting it up for the first time. So the first thing we've got in here is the index. Of course, it does have some color on it because I then used this page again in a subsequent video to show different index ideas. So as part of the Bullet Journal Basic series, it only really had the first two entries. But flipping over, we then have the future log, which is done in the style that Ryder Carroll recommends. So splitting each of the pages into thirds, so you have six months per page, like Ryder suggests in his original video. And then another spread with the same layout so that you have a full 12 months. After this, we get into the monthly setup. So that vertical monthly timeline using little lines to separate the different weeks if you want to, because that's something he talks about things like you can do it if you'd like to. And also how you would populate that monthly spread. We then have the monthly task list, which makes up part of the monthly log as a whole. So monthly timeline, monthly task list. Then after this, we get into a weekly log. Now the weekly log used in the bullet journal method is actually slightly different to the weekly log that the majority of people online use. So we talked about the different parts of the weekly log. So the reflection space versus the task list space and how this gets used alongside daily logs. I mean, if you want to, again, it's your journal. You do as you will. After this though, we have the daily logs and showed off how you would use those based on the rapid logging system and the different symbols. And then also just some different ideas for different videos, thus the little icons and the color. After this though, we have another setup that was done as part of a live stream. And this one was showing that you could set up a journal with just one pen and still make it kind of like a little bit decorative, a little bit pretty. In this one, we used a basic ass pen. It's like a biro clicky pen that was from Kmart. So we have a grid spacing guide and a key. After that, we have a future log done in the kind of Alistair method. So each of the columns representing a different month of the year. And then you just have your events list down the side. We had a little goal planning space. So what is the goal? Why are you working on it? What's the ideal outcome? metrics of success to hit, and then some planning for how you're actually gonna tackle it. And then after this one, we have the self-care bingo board. Again, just being a little bit decorative, a little bit doodly, but really only using one pen. It was very much a like one pen layout, one pen setup. As I like to include in the majority of my new journal setups though, we also had to have a Nujo plan, which plans out your next journal setup and a space to map out what layouts you wanted to include, that kind of thing. And then we're into the layouts that I set up for other eclectic videos. So I believe this one was when we were talking about different styles of future log probably, because we have like days one through 31 and then the different months that you can map things into and then the year at a glance. So I think this might've been the video about the year at a glance versus a future log or something like that. These are just little stickers that were from Oopsie-Daisy, very handy. This one was for when we were talking about indexing ideas and ways to kind of like level up your index or make it more user-friendly. So putting it into different sections for different types of pages so that when you're looking for anything related to work, you go to the work section, anything related to home is in the home section. This page was intentionally left blank and then we have some more index ideas. This one being for alphabetizing your index though. So kind of making it more like a traditional index. This is a journal that has plenty of space left over, but we do have more ideas to look at. Remember, these are all just idea layouts that I've set up this year. So you can kind of see why I don't put this in my everyday journal. This notebook in particular is a super cheap one from Kmart though, which I use very much just for like messy stuff. We'll get to it in a second. But on the inside cover of this one, if I can pick it up, we have a flip out year at a glance. So just showing that you can have flip outs that you see from any page in the notebook, but putting that one back in. Now, the reason in particular that I have a notebook from Kmart is that I use this one for a kind of like cheap setup or like budget friendly setup, essentially just using supplies that were a lot less expensive than the things I typically use. So a nice low cost notebook and low cost pens, that kind of thing. As part of the setup video though, we had the grid spacing guide. We have a space to outline goals in different life areas. We had a future log with some kind of decorative spaces, which are just brown paper bags, nice and cheap. 
And then over the page, we have 24 before 2024. So you can tell I set this one up as kind of like a 2023 setup. A year of monthly challenges. So just specifying what challenges you wanted to set yourself for each of the months of the year. And then we have a space to record any kind of media consumption. So TV shows watched, movies watched, and books read. A when did I last in the form of the Alistair method. So a column for each of the months of the year. And then the tasks down the side, you just tick off in the relevant relevant column once you've done it in that month. I really like the little dots around the outside. I think that's quite cute. But flipping over and then we're into the stuff that's again more kind of eclectic. I used it for a bunch of different videos, mainly as like B-roll or showing examples or stuff like this. So this was about how to make a reset checklist. In particular, how to make your reset easier. So this was the full monthly reset checklist in black and then going through and eliminating the parts that aren't really necessary and just scratching those out and then trying to make an easier version of anything that was left over. That's in pink. And then the green specifies the time taken for each of those things. But again, we have a full separate video on that. This one was related to the same video about how to make things easier and whatnot. And then this was the simplified version that we came up with at the end of the process. On to the next layout. I was ruling this up for something, it didn't work out, so I probably put it somewhere else. This entry was for B-roll in a separate video. Again, this is why I don't want to put it in my everyday journal. Like, I don't want to set up an entire page to write one line of text in my everyday journal. The thing with this is that this is not a notebook that is probably going to get kept as like reference material. This one's probably going to get recycled when I'm finished with it. Flipping through some of these kind of just more generic messy pages. Feel free to pause and have a snoop if you want to, but this is just general ideas that I had. This one was for the waterfall tabs video, and then I wanted to use the pages because there's still a lot of space, so I started just writing different notes on them and whatever else. Feathering, drawing a feather. This one was a brain dump for the week, so again, just wanted to be messy with it, so I didn't mind putting it in here. Putting in little mock-ups of different pages and layouts. For this one, I was on a live stream and we were talking about kind of different ways to form your cursive letters. B-roll, and then we are into the blank pages. But again, there is more. Coming back to something that is in a notebook with thicker paper and layouts that are a little bit more aesthetic. Along with the nameplate page on this one, we again have a little flip out. This one is the year at a glance calendar. And just using little dots to indicate the completion or not completion of something. So it could be a habit tracker, could be a monthly challenge, whatever you want it to be. The first collection of ideas we have in this one though are all related to Dutch doors. So using a bunch of very pretty washi tapes to show off some different styles of Dutch doors that you could use in your journal. This one was very much a decorative Dutch door done in the style of a cover page. So a little June header, little monthly calendar, and then underneath this you could put like a monthly log or something else. But the Dutch door was the idea, so I didn't fill the other part in. After that one though, the next Dutch door we have is another monthly log. So having your monthly calendar and then underneath that having other monthly things. So monthly notes, monthly gratitude. And while all of these are very kind of washi tape heavy because we were showing off very pretty tapes, you can set it up so it's a lot more simple in terms of the decorative elements. This one is a productivity tracker. We have a full separate video about the productivity tracker on the channel, but each row is a day of the month. And then you fill individual boxes with icons or colors that represent the different productive tasks that you were doing. The Dutch door here is just for that key in the middle. Flipping over, the next Dutch door we have is for a weekly log and putting Dutch door at the top here for different happenings for each of the days of the week. So maybe this was like a meal plan and then this could be like a leisure log or number of hours worked or whatever you want to record. Down the bottom we have a space for each of the days of the week and then the weekend shared over here. And this one has a big stretch of decoration in the middle and I went a little bit crazy with all of the added little bits and pieces. <laughs> Flipping over, this one is a kind of monthly dashboard setup, I suppose. So we have days 1 through 30 down the side, and then space for gratitude along the side here, a habit tracker along the bottom, and then on this first page we have goals, memories, milestones, and projects. And then after this you can put in little Dutch doors for each of the days of the month. So this would be like week one, you'd then have another one which was week two, so on and so forth. I only put in two of them here because this was just an idea video, so I didn't want to use up a whole heap of pages in the notebook just to show off the idea. But we have two weeks in here, so I thought it still highlighted it nicely. 
I quite like the color palette on this one. I think it's like kind of calming, but flipping over, this one is a really fun style of Dutch door because the way that you cut the page is that you cut the top half off, but you also cut this corner piece off as well. And that way you can have these little checklists here that you see on each day of the week. So this is week one, then you flip over and you have week two. Then you could do that for other subsequent weeks as well. That means that on every single week, you can see your individual task lists and you can tick off when you've done the things because the little dots are part of the Dutch door. You also don't have to write out the weekly headers repeatedly because you can see that the Dutch door stops before the header and you can see your goals and your little monthly calendar. It's just a little bit of fun. Quite functional, but still quite interesting to look at. Flipping over, this one is a folded Dutch door. So if you're a little bit apprehensive about taking scissors to your page, you can just fold the page instead. That way you can flip it over here. You can see Monday with the to-do list for the week or flip this one over like that and then see Monday and Tuesday with the to-do list for the week. This is the style of Dutch door that I used to do quite a lot because I didn't like the idea of taking scissors to my page. These little stickers though, they are from the washi tape shop and they are so pretty. But flipping over, another fun one. This one has a bunch of Dutch doors again for each of the weeks of the month, but each week has a little attached Dutch door tab type thing where you can put a little tracker to track your habits across the month. You'd probably want to do a slightly better job of it than I've done here to actually make things align properly, but I do think it looks pretty cool. Cool. And then each of these also acts as a little tab that you can use to flip through your individual weeks. And I tried to do a different style of weekly on each of them. This last one though isn't actually a tab, it's just attached to the back page. So flipping over, this Dutch door is one that you can use to kind of like hide information. You can almost make it blend into your page in such a way that it just sneakily flips up here. This one in particular was done with a tip in rather than cutting away the page. So just using an off cut from a previous page to stick that one in as that little door there. You can see that the PT tape doesn't do quite as well on the craft paper compared to on the white paper. On the white paper, I think it blends in a lot more seamlessly compared to, I don't know, colored paper like the craft. On to the next layout though. This one was all about different styles of habit tracker. So tracking habits that have different frequencies. These two were for multiple times a day. Some different styles you can use for habits you want to complete multiple times a day, as was the one over here. Whereas this one was for daily habits. We did talk about in this video that a lot of the styles are quite interchangeable as well. Like you could technically use this style for a habit that happens multiple times a day by just writing out the individual instances of the habit along the top. But flipping over, this one was just a fun way to kind of highlight that there are a bunch of different ways you can track the same information. More daily habits. This one's kind of on a weekly layout rather than on a monthly view. But the next one we have are things that happen multiple times a week, but not necessarily daily. Again, you could track that on a weekly log or you can track it in its own separate tracker. This one was broken down into the different weeks and then the number of habits you've got how many times you want to complete them and when they got completed. Flipping over, we have multiple times a week again, but kind of specifying which days you want to do them and then checking them off. And then we have weekly habits. This one just using a mini calendar and icons to represent the different things. And then we have weekly habits again using those mini calendars. And then weekly habits tracked across the entire of the year, which I suppose both of these are because that's a year at a glance. Anywho, then we have multiple times a month, so less frequent. Effectively, that's where we were moving. We were going from super frequent to less frequent. And just looking at the different styles of ways you could track those. So multiple times a month, monthly, monthly like we've seen previously with that Alastair method and then monthly again with a box for each of the months of the year and then we've got the ones that are super infrequent so setting up some when did I last layouts. After this though the layouts in this section are all about work so this one was breaking your work down into quarters so January through March, July through September kind of like a quarterly based future log. After this one we have the master task list so things that you need to do in different spans of time, or it could be like project based. One that I used to use quite a lot while I was a teacher was a holiday slash leave log. So I could map in when the school holidays were, when I took leave, when we had staff only days and see it all at a glance. And then flipping over, we have, again, these ones are all split up into smaller sections. If I were to use them, I would probably put them on their own pages, but we have a job description reference just so that Possibly you can remind yourself the things that are 
expectations and ones that aren't, especially if like me, you have a tendency to overwork quite easily. Down the bottom, we have a space for team member notes. So writing down who they are, what their contact details are for when you need to get in contact with them, maybe even possibly their birthday, if they have any allergies, any kind of information that might be useful that they have offered up to you. We have a space for professional goals. And then as related to that, we have a milestones and achievements log. So a date to specify when it happened, what was the accomplishment? Is this something that you could put on your CV? And do you have any evidence or artifacts of that achievement? On to the next ones, we have professional development ideas. So the skill that you're trying to acquire and then the resources that you maybe want to investigate for that skill. And as related to resources, we also have resource recommendations. So what was the resource? who recommended it to you and what reason or what topic is it about. Following on from the Bujo Basic series and having the idea of dedicated indexes, if you have your work stuff interdispersed with your personal and home stuff in your journal, it can be really useful to have a work related index. So a space that just specifies where work things are in your bullet journal. Underneath this though, we have the typical agenda structure. So if you're in charge of taking minutes or sending out agendas for meetings, then having a set structure that you follow, maybe a reference for that, could be useful. Doesn't necessarily have to be in here either. It could be a digital one. As we mentioned, these are all just ideas that don't actually have to live in your journal either. Something that I used to find super helpful though was an infrequent process reference. So effectively the steps that you have to take for a process that you do super infrequently, which means that every time you come to do it, you're like, huh? For me, that was like changing over the classes in a particular set of software that we were using. I could never remember how to do it and it was not intuitive. So I wrote myself a list of steps to take to help future me out. We have a reference for your new computer setup. So things that you want to do and things that you want to install just in case like you get a new computer or you need to set up a new computer or whatever else. Similarly, we also have desk setup specifics, especially if your work uses hot desking and you might need to set it up so that it's as user friendly as possible for you. We have the infrequently accessed files and where to find them. Again, done as an Alistair method and you can specify how often you reference those. So you can be like, oh, it's the new quarter. What do I need to reference? Here they are. Where can I find them? We have work related trigger list. So similar to the trigger list, we talked about before. This is a list of things that you just scan your eyes over. It helps you brain dump or mind unwind more effectively. And of course, in your work related journaling, you can just include reference materials. I just included a list of different references you might want to include rather than set up a little example or idea for every single one of them. But one idea that I do quite like is repeated workflows. These could be set up like this. So kind of like, I don't know, flow chart, or it could just be a list of steps that you take in order to get something done. Flipping over, this one is a work-related Kanban board and we had two different styles here. So ones that were kind of related to set tasks and you just go through them or ones that are related to to do, currently doing, done. As things move from one space to another, you just pull up the sticky note and put it in the new place. This guy here is the prioritization matrix and I love the prioritization matrix. It's not just good for work related stuff though. I've actually put one in my reading journal. And the idea is that when you're trying to prioritize things, for instance, a list of 10 items, rather than trying to consider them all together at once, you put them head to head and consider them on a one-to-one -one scale and then use that information to figure out which one is the most important. In the video for these layouts, we do go into that in a bit more detail. And I've linked as many of them as I can in the description box. If there are any missing, you just let me know. This guy here is a flexible weekly schedule. You can see that it is shiny because I got that book contact paper on it. So you can write over the top of this with either a dry erase marker or I often and actually just use a permanent marker and then wipe it off at the end of the week and reset up your structure. Anything that's underneath the contact paper though is stuff that is kind of set in stone. It happens at the same time each week, but all of the flexible bits you can build on top of that, either with sticky notes or the pens we mentioned before, washi tape, whatever else. This guy here is a work reset routine. So the things that maybe you do weekly or monthly to give yourself a cool, calm, collected, fresh slate feeling for a new span of time. But underneath this, we have a feedback bank. So a place to write down any feedback you receive, whether that's positive or constructive. We hope for constructive rather than negative, but when you received it, who you received it from and what the feedback was. You could also then put in some action steps related to that if it's something that maybe you need to work further on. But underneath this, we then have a space for target tracking. 
and a couple of different options depending on what type of targets you're trying to hit. This could be done based on increments of like how many times you have to do something or percentage or steps or a number of things, whatever else. These were just little ideas for how you could do that target tracking. On this spread though, we have another four ideas. The first one of which is things to follow up on. This one's just done on a sticky note. So you could maybe pull it off at the end of each week or every couple of days as it fills up, but it's a space to jot down those things that you need to just check up on with other people. We have a space for meeting notes. So just the kind of specifics of like, when was it? Who was there? What were you discussing? any notes that you take down and then any actions that need to be undertaken. And then these two here are related to money. So we have expense tracking, which again, really depends on what line of work you're in. And we've also got a mileage log with a little conversion space at the top that you can write in like distance times insert number here gives you like the claimage amount. That one's just set up as a table with the date, the distance, the reason for the travel, the overall cost and then whether you did or didn't claim it or rather whether you've claimed it yet. Flipping over, this one here is a shift schedule slash tracker. So you can put in a little monthly calendar, specify when your shifts are and how long they're for, like when you start, when you end, how much time it is on that shift. And then a similar idea, just slightly different layout is doing this with a timeline. So this one goes from 6 a.m. till 5 a.m. the next day. Just in case you're the kind of person who works overnights, it's a little bit easier to consider that than a 12 through to 12. On this, you can also specify the days that you weren't working, like crossing them off here, or you can specify the days that you did overtime work as well, that kind of stuff too. Again, just depends on what kind of work you do. We bought back the work boundaries tracker because I honestly just think it's really important. So with a little key here of the different things you're trying to do to kind of maintain your boundaries at work, checking off whether they got done and also summing up the number of times you did it to make sure that you're tending in the right direction. This one here is a time log or time tracker. So specifying the different types of work that you do in your role and then seeing how long you spend doing each of those things on a day-to-day -day basis. This one's just set up as a monthly log. So one through 31, which means there's no data for the days that this person doesn't work, but you could also just set it up so it only contained your work days just so that you don't have any kind of like wasted space or anything like that. The productivity log returns though. So a row for each of the days of the week and then the little key in the middle. You can either just use letters to represent different things and keep it quite simple or you could use little icons or you could use colors just to kind of show how you're spending your time on each of the days that you're working. I find these types of layouts really helpful for just showing that like you actually did a whole bunch of stuff. Sometimes we have that feeling when we come to the end of the day, like what did I even achieve? The productivity log can help. This is another spread with multiple ideas. So we have a, when did it happen? to kind of show the timeline of working on certain things or projects or pieces of work. And then we have a focus planner, which I personally kind of use in my work. I don't specifically use it in like a log. I'm also put it on my dailies, but it's specifying what is like your priority or your focus for each individual day. That way you can make sure that your focus or priority is the thing that you work on first or you spend the most time on or whatever else. If you're the kind of person who either has meetings or manages meetings, it could be good to have a talk points kind of space. So a little, in this case, post-it note that you can jot down what you're going to be talking about with who, I suppose. You could do it so that you have a different post-it note for different people. If you're the person who organizes meetings with a bunch of people, or if it's just a meeting with your manager or something like that, you can jot down things that you want to discuss with them come your next meeting. This one here though is a monthly happenings tracker and you can write out the different tasks and then record when they happened using the different columns, which are each of the months of the year. This one was just set up as an example, so it doesn't actually have any real tasks in it. This guy here is a projects tracker, which we kind of looked at before. It's just that we've flipped the order of where these things are. So the projects are now at the top rather than on the side and the steps are instead of being at the top along the side now here. I set this one up based on my work. So these are each of the different videos. And then I could write down all of the steps that I need to take in producing those videos and getting them released on the channel. This one is a typical monthly schedule. So thinking about the weeks of the month and the different tasks that you might want to do on a monthly basis. And rather than just doing them either all at the start of the month or all at the end of the month, trying to intentionally schedule them across the month. So maybe in week one, we do these tasks and these are the days they happen on. In week two, we do these tasks and these are the days they happen on. Just trying to spread your work out a little bit, but it can also be good for task batching. For instance, 
this week here, week two, where these two tasks happen on the same day. Down the bottom, we have a project overview, which again would probably get a full page to itself rather than just tucked into a corner. But after this, we are out of the work-related layout specifically and into the layouts that were for my 24 new bullet journal ideas for 2024. This video was the one that had that flip out from the start, thus the similar decoration that you can see here and here. But having a look at these ideas, we again have the little pocket. That one was just kind of like a bonus idea. But then inside of the little pocket, we have little reflection cards, which you can write little reflection questions on that you can use to do your monthly, weekly, daily reflection. We also have a little box template. So this can be used when you're trying to sketch out layouts. If you use a particular size of box repeatedly, you can just like line it up with the dot grid and see where you need to put things. So that's kind of cute. And this one here is a grid guide, but it's a little bit special in that it is folded along the edge. So rather than trying to hold it to the side of your notebook and like hover and make sure it doesn't move, you just fold the edge over and you can effectively kind of like attach it to the side of your notebook and slide it into the correct position. A little bit hard to see, but hopefully you get the idea. Putting those ones back into the pocket though, making sure that they will be accessible for later use. There we go. The next idea we have though is a flipbook layout. So it has little pieces of paper that you just stuck in as little tip-ins and you can use it for a variety of things really. I've set this one up as kind of like a little weekly schedule. So each of the little pieces of paper is a different day of the week. You can just flip to it when you wanna do your Thursday tasks or flip to it when you wanna do your Sunday. It's really just a lot of fun. Flipping on over though, the next idea we have is a habit menu. And this one is mainly based on the idea of avoiding boredom. Oftentimes, or at least I, have a tendency to, when doing the same thing repeatedly, get a little bit bored with it. So this one tries to combat that by listing out different potential ways to do effectively the same thing. For instance, exercise and the different types of exercise that you can do so that you don't get bored with your exercise routine. Or if you're trying to build your water intake, the different ways that you can intake water that isn't just drink water. Another idea related to habits is the high bar, low bar habits option, where for each of the habits that you're trying to build, you set yourself a high bar, which is effectively like the actual completion of the habit that you're aiming for, but then also a low bar that's like a super entry level version of that habit. This one is just set up as a regular habit tracker, and then you can use different colors to represent whether you met the high bar, the low bar, or neither of the two. Flipping over though, and our next idea here is a habit scorecard. So the idea that for the habits that you're tracking, giving yourself a score out of the number of days of the month to say how many days that habit actually got completed. This one I've just set up with the Alistair method again. So a column for each of the months of the year, including December of the previous year. So then you can use a little color code to say whether your completion was better, worse, or effectively the same as the month prior. Down the bottom, the next idea we have is future me problems. And it's a list of those things that you'd like to do at some point, but they're not necessarily for today or this week or this month possibly not even this year, depending on where you put them. For instance, if this was in your long-term collections journal or something like that. And then on the right-hand side here, this idea is an energy tracker. So having set times of the day where you check in and say like, how energetic am I feeling? Am I feeling high energy, good energy, poor or very low? You can also add some additional kind of notes to this with little icons and just put that beside the tracker itself. But this can help you see different energy cycles or energy patterns that you either have across the month or across each day, that kind of thing. On to the next page. And the idea we have here is the trigger list, like we talked about before, just, you know, done in a different setup. So it's here again. And down the bottom, we have another savings challenge, but this one is called the this or that challenge. So effectively taking an item that you have a tendency to purchase a lot and recording how many times you consider purchasing it versus how many times you actually purchase it. So for instance, in this example, we're thinking about a BK King box, which is $6 at least here in New Zealand and currently, and then saying across the year, I have a goal to save $120 by saying no to the BK King box. That equates to 20 instances. And then you can just track for each month how many times you say no to the urge to buy the King box. The next idea we have is another year long challenge. This one being for lists of a certain amount. So for instance, 24 in 2024, 25 in 2025. For each of the list titles, you write out however many entries 
entries for the list. So that could be 24 small goals for the year, 24 favourite things. Just a little bit of fun and something you maybe dedicate an entire notebook to, depending on how many lists and how many items you want to record. This one here is another reusable layout, as you can see from the shininess, and this one is a reusable meal plan. So it has a box for each of the days of the week, and then a little space for next week, and you can just use that dry erase marker, or post-it notes, or anything else that you can kind of put on and then take off to say what meals you're going to be having across the week. Over here we have the return of the prioritization matrix and you can kind of see it a little bit more filled in here. So the head to head battles like A versus B where B won, A versus C where C won, B versus C where B won, filling all of that in, totaling up how many instances of each letter appear in the actual matrix itself, and then whichever one has the most is the most important, whichever one has the second most is the second most important, so on and so forth. On to the next page though, this one here is a flexible weekly schedule, but this one isn't reusable in the sense of having that kind of laminate over the top of it. This one would just be done with washi tape or sticky notes, that kind of thing. Anything that is a set in stone happens every week at the same time, you just draw onto the page using a pen. Everything else you can put in with like pencil or those removable pieces. Something that I'm doing more of in 2024 is fortnightly or bi-weekly planning. So having a layout that specifies each of the days of the fortnight or the two week period and what you're gonna be doing in that time. This one is based on the idea of time blocks, so five time blocks per day, where the last time block is some kind of leisure activity. Also on the weekend, so Saturday is a kind of more dedicated time off, and Sunday also has the evening off as well. This could also be used as a tracker rather than like a pre-scheduled out thing, just to kind of show how you're using your time across that period. This one has five ideas on it, so we have the recipe for a good day, which is returning from those self-care ideas from before, a prioritized task list, which uses the Alistair method to indicate whether a task is a do task, so you do it yourself, a defer, so you put it off, a delegate and give it to somebody else, or a decide, like does it actually need to be done? That way you can prioritize your work in terms of which ones are kind of a little bit more urgent, need to be done a little bit sooner, and need to be done by you versus the ones that don't. Down the bottom we have a project roadmap, and again this is one where I would backwards plan from an end goal, so we need to sell the house before we sell the house, we need to do the open home before the open home, we need to do the home staging. To do the home staging we need to do all of these different things, just as a way to kind of map out the project so you can see what you need to do in what order. At the top here we have quarterly planning, so thinking about each of the quarters of the year and things that you want to do in each of those, especially for tasks that only really get done maybe once or twice a year, rather than things that get done every single quarter. The idea with planning it out this way is that those annual tasks don't get done all at the same time, either the start or the end of the year, instead they get spread out across the quarters. This one at the bottom is another version of the when did it happen, but this one is done on a monthly calendar rather than a vertical log. So effectively another version of this style of layout, just done in a monthly calendar rather than a list. Flipping over, this idea is a contact tracker. So kind of like the contact log that we had from the relationship building ideas, but this one's done on a year at a glance and you just put in a dot to represent the days that you contacted the person. You could color code it for different important people or for the different types of contact or for maybe days that you said you were going to contact them and then you missed it or something similar. But this idea here is a last week in doodles, which I think is a great idea if you want to practice your doodling and get a little bit better at drawing. But also it's kind of just like a fun memory keeping layout. So picking a couple of different parts of the day, maybe some little instances, they could be kind of special moments or maybe just generic things and drawing them in, maybe writing a little label to accompany it to show what was going on throughout the week. After this one, I do still have some space left in this notebook for more ideas. So this guy, along with any of the other not quite finished ones, are going to be my R&D notebooks for next year. That was quite a few ideas, and if you made it to this point, let me know that you're a wizard in the comments below. But if you are still on the hunt for more bullet journal inspiration, then we actually have a flip through of my previous R&D notebook. That one's worth checking out for even more things that you can include in your new journal setup. So click or tap on that one and I'll see you over there.